Welcome to Genesis Global Radio, the origin of information. And now here's your host, Christine Larkin. Hello and thank you for tuning in to Genesis Global Radio, the origin of information. I'm Christine Larkin. On today's segment, we'll be speaking once again with Kimberly Berg, male feminist artist, creator of the website IsisRising.net. He is the founder of what he calls modern Paleolithic art. He is interested in drawing attention to the prehistorical, pre-patriarchal period in human evolution. It was a time when women played a very important role in creating a civilization built on female values. They were social values based on respect for women, on a peaceful community free of war and bloodshed, on compassion for others and on a lifestyle lived in harmony with nature and in a spirituality that permeated every facet of their daily life. Kim is back with us again, and it's my pleasure to have him here. Hello, Kim. How are you? Fine. Thank you. So in our last segment, we talked, oh, about a lot of different things, but you know, people living in a prehistoric time when there was no written records and, and somehow, you know, finding uh, this history through digs, archaeological digs. Um, so how are women different today uh, from how they lived in ancient times before patriarchy? We touched a little bit on that in the last segment as well. But I'd like to go over that uh, again here today for new listeners. Well, one thing that the share in common is that they both know what it means to be a mother, and that influences a lot of their life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's there's other things that are not similar. Um, one thing is the fact that women in the Neolithic period and Paleolithic period were in full control of their life, and we can't say that now, you know. Now, when you say that they were in full control, what was the man's role? What I mean, I'm trying to imagine being in total control, which, you know, quite frankly, let me shift that a little bit. What if you remained single your whole life? I mean, we, we, typically, I think we're talking about couples, married. It, w- would you say that, that when you come from that perspective where women had the control, were they married at that time or single at that time? Well, I'm not sure whether they had such an institution as marriage. Mm. Yeah, uh, it, that'd be something know. interesting to look into. <laughs> yes, it, it did. They did have it later in the Neolithic period, but in the Paleolithic period, it was it, it, there wasn't any um, there wasn't any institution like that. Uh. Women we're seeing completely different than what they are now. Mm-hmm. The fact that they were able to bear young, to be, to create life within their body, set them apart from men and anyone else you know, in the society. And they were very highly regarded because without that, their clan would not survive. You know, the lifespan at that time was very short, you know, probably 30 years old. Okay. So it's very important that they bring in children to reproduce and, and uh, allow for the survival of the clan. Mm-hmm. So women had a very high position in those early civilizations, uh, and they were very highly regarded. And the important thing to understand is that conception was not understood at that time. Okay. Hmm. And that made a big difference. That changes so many things. And and could could the woman at that time choose the father of her children? Most Did, likely. But hmm. the thing is, at that time, they didn't even know that, that men had any part in conception. Oh my so goodness. when they had sex, it was just for pleasure, okay. you know, and it, there wasn't any any ties connected to it. So there was no knowledge that the man impregnated the woman, basically. 
I mean, they they could have thought the woman just became pregnant. This is utterly fascinating and, and something that really affects the way that we view male-female relationships today. Mm-hmm. So let's go back a little bit. Not having that knowledge about who impregnated who, really, which seems like such a foreign concept to us now, knowing what we know. Uh, women really could take that stand and be very powerful. Right, and they were, too. The, the thing is, not only did they not understand conception, but they thought it was the moon that made them pregnant. Mm-hmm. Because, first of all, the moon grows full and then wanes. Right. And their body becomes full and then returns to its normal size. So they saw a connection there between the moon and a woman's pregnancy. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but women's menstrual cycle also followed the cycles of the moon. Mm-hmm. And they observed all these things, you know, very closely. Mm-hmm. So then it it appeared that women had a cosmic connection, not just human. Right. And that set her even further apart from the rest of the male population. Hence the goddess. So how did the ancient great mother goddess differ from what we understand of the biblical god? Well, there's a huge difference, actually. Um, The goddess, first of all, was a loving, compassionate woman who sympathized with women's needs. And women could relate to her because they knew she was a woman and she understood them and their body. And and they could go to her uh, when they were giving birth and find comfort and strength in knowing that the goddess was there and make and would make her delivery successful. Mm-hmm. And it's something that a male god, you know, you can't relate to a male god on that, on that same level when you're... So uh, that, that was a big change. And when you feel that you have that kind of source of, power, of um, support, it it helps you psychologically to do to be in more command of your life and to do things and take risks and knowing that everything will be okay because you have a loving goddess mm-hmm. or or mother that that is overlooking you and their their whole conception of creation was different from what we have through the bible they thought because birth and new life comes through the womb and through a woman's belly, that the creator of the universe and of the earth had to be a woman. And and the reason that we have trees and flowers and mountains and oceans is because all these things came from her, her ability to give birth. Hmm. And then this... This was also conferred on on all women. Um, They felt that she not only gave birth to children, but she also gave birth and made sure that um, the seeds grow and that animals reproduce. And all these things depended on women. Mm -hmm. So she held a very high standing in that society. Yeah. Something which we do not have at all now, of course, because uh, everything changed sides. And when patriarchy came in, they replaced the goddess and substituted a male god. And the male god was not peaceful. The male god was not did not show very much compassion. The male god was very militaristic and... and was created more or less by these tribes that we just spoke about mm-hmm. um, from Asia that uh, wanted to change the whole the whole society to uh, to represent what they felt was reality. Yeah, their perception, which even permeates today. I mean, a lot of times an Asian woman has to walk behind a man. Uh, we still see that. But I want to take a little step back to the goddess role. You know, you mentioned earlier in another segment that there are there are groups of women that get together 
and empower each other. And it's done more on a uh, sort of a behind closed doors, I think, more than out in, in the public. Uh, and, and I, too, am aware of groups like that and I actually belong to one where we meet monthly and we inspire each other. We inspire each other to create and go forward into our careers. And it's made up of women from all professional backgrounds. Uh, and it's it's really great. You know, it's a, a sort of a goddess kind of thing where we all, you know, stroke each other's ego and say, oh, you're doing wonderful. You're doing great. But it's necessary. I think it's important to have uh, that support system. You know, it's like a, a little network. So yes, that's, that's one thing that's very characteristic amongst women, even in Paleolithic times, mm-hmm. when they were able to live together in a cl- closely knit society. They really flourished, yeah. and all sorts of interesting things developed um, in that kind of a situation. You know, like I, I mentioned um, the last time, how it was women who invented how to create bread, how to bake it. Yeah, and, and I'm sure this came out. You know of. Uh, the kind of exchange of ideas and experimentation that was going on amongst women. Mm-hmm. And and I just learned the other day that um, cheese making was also something that that was started in the Neolithic time. Oh, very interesting. And, and that's another thing. I'm sure that these ideas um, gained traction because women were working together in a closely knit network and exchanging ideas back Mm -hmm. and forth like Mm -hmm. crazy, probably. Yeah. And, you know, women are actually very supportive of one another uh, in an environment like that. So we're going to take a short break and we'll come back and continue this very, very fascinating conversation uh, with Kimberly Berg. Uh, His website, isisrising.net, on the break, maybe you'll go on the site and see some incredible, incredibly beautiful uh, art. He works in pastels, and it's just, just gorgeous. Pop him an email, kdega at artlover.com. Tell Kim what you think. I'm Christine Larkin. I'm your host on Genesis Global Radio, the origin of information. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome and thank you for listening to Genesis Global Media Talk Radio. Genesis Global Media is an advertising agency and so much more. We put you on the map. That's right. Genesis Global Media is a branding machine. If you have a story to tell, we get the word out there. Radio shows nationally, television shows nationally, print, internet, search engine optimization, social media, you name it, we do it all. Our in-house staff provides you with everything you need from concept to finished product. Our state-of-the-art 10,000 square foot video production facility is out of this world. During these tough economic times, most ad agencies have closed their doors. Our doors just keep opening with 10 new clients coming on board weekly. Stop on by our website at www.genesisglobalmedia.com or call us at 631-419-7344. If you have a business, a product, or need to get messaging out there to millions of people, we're your solution. Stop on by our website at genesisglobalmedia.com or call us at 631-419-7344. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Hello and welcome back. I'm your host, Christine Larkin, and you're listening to Genesis Global Radio, the origin of information. Today's guest, once again, is artist Kimberly Berg. He has this incredible uh, website, isisrising.net. That's I-S-I-S-R-I-S-I-N-G dot net. And he is uh, a feminist artist. He believes uh, in the the woman. We talk about the evolution 
uh, matriarchal societies versus patriarchal and all of the dynamics that go into that. Uh, so let's start by, you know, the second half. How does uh, what you call modern Paleolithic art relate to what was created by Paleolithic artists? Well, Paleolithic artists, um, they're best known for two things. Uh, the cave art that uh, was mostly animals that were painted on cave walls. Mm -hmm. That's Everybody has heard about that, and these are magnificent, you know, paintings. But another uh, class of art that people are not as familiar with is called uh, Venuses. And these are sculptures or engravings of women done by Paleolithic artists, whether they were male or female, it's hard to say, but it was another very important part of their artistic um, production. And the reason that they're called Venuses is actually uh, kind of a joke that male anthropologists, who were the main people that were doing the work at this time, they named them Venuses even because they thought that the Paleolithic idea of a beautiful woman was really distorted because these women were not what we naturally consider beautiful. Mm -hmm. They had huge breasts, they had wide hips, they had a large stomach, and these artists were trying to create a woman that was very important in their society, the pregnant woman. Without that, the survival of the clan would be in jeopardy. So what they considered beautiful and important was something that that our idea of beauty, you know, does not represent at all. Where did the idea of beauty change? I mean, that is a, a very interesting point that you've made there. Yeah. I, and and there are still people who view the large woman as extremely desirable. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. where did the mainstream beauty of women come from? Society. The idea is that artists strive to create something that represents what they believe important. And they are trying to paint what are our ardent dreams. So that if you can connect with people on that level, your art will be very well appreciated. Mm. And this is what Paleolithic artists were doing. For them, the, the pregnant woman was the most beautiful uh, and most important part of their society. Mm -hmm. And so they were honoring women by creating images like this. So it relates more to the perspective yeah. at that time. Yes. And it's hard to know what dictates that, is it not? Well, it may be for us because we have a hard time, you know, appreciating the pregnant woman. Mm. And that's one reason why I have a whole gallery of pregnant women mm -hmm. and trying to help people to see themselves and help women see themselves as beautiful. Our society has this idea that pregnant women are are much less um, desirable than the regular woman who has uh, uh, a figure that that we consider to be beautiful. Yeah. It's it's so interesting to observe. Um, one thing I've noticed is the clothing has changed. Uh, there was a time where a pregnant woman would never wear something form-fitting. And now you're actually seeing the stomach showing, like in the summer. You know, some pants are low and part of the stomach is showing and very uh, form-fitting clothing. So it's changing somewhat, do you think? Oh, yes, definitely. And, and this um, goes back to the Paleolithic idea. Women at that time were proud of their bodies, mm -hmm. and they were proud to show that they were pregnant, and they were 
you know, contributing to the well-being of their of their society. Yeah. And now, when we see women not afraid to to emphasize their their body in this way, is really a throwback to how women originally thought of themselves. Mm. So, Kim, do you think that that's changed uh, partly because maybe at one time uh, there was we were kind of talking about overpopulation. You know, the planet's overpopulated. There's too many people. And then that beauty of the pregnant woman was more viewed at uh, as, oh, my gosh, you're being irresponsible. And now that the dialogue or the trend is not so much on overpopulation, it's more on global warming now, the, the pregnant woman can show herself again. Does that have something to do with it? No, I think it has more to do with the image that women have of themselves, which okay. is changing, and which I hope my art is playing an important role. Mm. You know, it's the artist creating the image that affects how people see themselves. Ah, uh, yes. And that is what I'm trying to accomplish through my art. And it's so the beautiful. Especially pregnant nude. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely gorgeous. And if you go on isisrising.net, you'll see these images. Uh, can you talk a little bit about one of your favorites? You know, through radio, we can use our imagination. Yes. Well, I was surprised because I, I have a Facebook page now with my art on it. Mm -hmm. And the image that had the most likes was a small painting that I have done, you know, quite a few years ago in the uh, Women in Mirror series, which is uh, a series of three different um, paintings of a woman looking in a mirror mm. or or uh, having a mirror in the, in the room with her. And the last image in this series of three, the woman is turned towards the mirror and she sees her face, and she sees a very strong, determined face in the mirror. Mm. And that that image has really resonated with women, because Beautiful. that's what they want to see. Yeah. That's how they want to see themselves. Sure. And and as a result, and that's exactly the effect that I wanted to create. Mm-hmm. Well, do you think that women are still viewed as, as goddesses today on some level? Is it more woman to woman or are men starting to, you know, like I mentioned in a prior segment, that I, I think, and maybe it's a personal opinion, that men like to revere the woman that they're with if she lets them. Uh, so do you think women are still viewed as goddesses? I wish I wish that were so, but mm -hmm. I, I, I think most men are still pretty much see women through the eyes of how patriarchy, you know, has showed us, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I I know that there is a change taking place, but I don't know if men are still respecting and looking at women in, in such a, a way. There are some, you know, some women that are beginning to have that kind of respect for women, but it's... It really needs to be. Um, it really needs to have more men feel that way. Yeah, across the board. There are changes taking place in our society. That's for sure. Um, I see more women, more men pushing baby strollers than ever before. Ah. So there is there is changes taking There's place. There's a shift, right? Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, you know that whole parenting uh, part of a relationship is probably more shared today than it has been in in recent past. Mm -hmm. And that has a lot to do, I think, with the economic situation, too. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. We all have to help each other now. You know, it's kind of... Let's touch on that a little bit as we're winding down here. Uh, that's a very, very good point. And I think throughout history, economics has played a key role in behavior. Uh, so, yeah, this observation that men are wheeling carriages around more often. Do you think that the women are, are out in the workplace more now? And as men age, maybe their positions are changing? Well, what's going on there? 
Well, there are big changes taking place, that's for sure. Uh, men no longer, the workplace is so different. You know, before yeah. that, uh, strength was the main the main uh, reason why men were able to always find a job, even if they didn't have very much of an education. If they were strong, they could always find work. Mm-hmm. Now, our society has become more technical orientated, and it's your mind that is more important than your brawn. Yeah. And there, women fill that niche much better, much more effectively than most men. And I, so a lot of women now uh, are making more money than their husband. Mm-hmm. And, and if the husband has, loses his job or is laid off or something, um, what else is there left but to take care of your children? And yeah. I have, I have certain, I have friends, you know, where that's taken place. Sure. Where the guy is the one who raises the children. And it's good. So there is kind of a shift going on here, Kim. You know, as we wind down in one minute here, tell us what you think of this coming celebration. Well, the interesting thing is that the Virgin Mother, this is something that goes back to Paleolithic times, you know, where the the woman giving birth to a child was very highly um, honored. Mm. And and. The, the idea of the mana, Madonna and the child is still with us today. And so it's we can't say, you know, that we don't have anything in common with the um, civilization that existed many thousands of years ago. There's, there's still remnants of that in our own civilization. Yes, there, there is. Beautifully said. Well, thank you so very much for being on again, and we hope you come back. Thank you. I appreciate you inviting me here. For upcoming segments, log on to www.genesisglobalmedia.com and keep your finger on the pulse of the hottest brands on the planet. 